G'day viewers, it's Michael here again and welcome back to Single Racer and welcome to the second part of a two-part series where I feature two cars that were purchased or given to me as part of the Black Friday sale and this is the Formula Americas 2020 by Racing Studio, another brilliant car. And here's the car here in all its glory, but I must confess I couldn't find out that much about it. It seems to be a pay and play series to keep costs down to find uh, new developing drivers. And I believe it's sanctioned by IndyCar, or at least I hope that's correct. And I read that on Wiki, so I believe anything on Wikipedia is true. Uh, but all joking aside, um, I figured then that I would match it up to one of my other favorite cars only this time it's a vrc car another brilliant car this is the formula na uh, 1999 indy car and that's a sensational car as well and so on that basis it's now time to go racing but just one important thing for viewers of these two videos because it's very important that you understand i'm not trying to showcase the cars as they are performance wise in real life. In other words, these are two jewels that I wanna keep the cars deliberately close together to show off both cars in the video. So this is just hopefully for entertainment's sake. So please don't be critical, especially with these two cars, given that one is in 1999 and the other is uh, 2020 so naturally they're going to have different uh, power outputs and things like that so it's only for show so please keep that in mind so now let's go racing so this is michael signing out for single racer i'll catch you next time see you later and let's go racing Okay, folks, so now we're on Barcelona Moto uh, in a Seto Corsa against the Formula NA 1999 by VRC, and we're off. Now, I must confess that unlike GT cars, which is what I normally drive, I'm very unfamiliar with not only this car, but F1 cars, Indy cars, and open wheelers in general. So. Although I've had quite a few practice runs on this track, you might have seen me again come off in the opening sequence, uh, but I'm just not as familiar with driving these cars as I, as I run a bit wide there. It's just uh, uh, a lot more foreign to me than uh, the normal sort of tin top cars that I usually drive as I, ooh, as I, I go for a little bit of a kick there. Now, this is the first time that I've driven this car on this track, even though I've had a few practice runs to get uh, familiar with just how to apply the accelerator. So it's the two things together that I have trouble with. And this is one here where it's the rapid change down. So normally I'm used to in GT cars, always having that pause. So it's the change, 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 change. But here you've got to do it, especially in F1 cars that I'm not used to. That rapid bang, 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 bang that I get from uh, watching a lot of um, Ferrari Man 601 videos. And he's given me a great tip there, which you might have seen if you watch my, uh, the gearing, uh, not the gearing, the pedal input, sorry, to the right here, uh, where... He's taught me just to hold it. So before I used to just cruise or coast into the corner and you have a look at the um, the pedal green input there. He's taught me to so, sort of hold it halfway and it just keeps the speed up as I accelerate out of that corner and just helps me uh, not bog down as much as, <coughs> although I muck that up yet again, I run out too wide, but luckily it didn't seem to kill the speed. And that's what I mean, he's really helped me uh, sort of dial in that speed and hold the speed at a much higher, not a higher speed, but just a more, um, how, how shall I say it, more um, solid uh, speed coming through the corner. You know, I don't, I don't get as bogged down as much as I used to in the past. 
So now, let's focus on just trying to keep up and look for an opportunity to pass him. Now I must admit the AI is a bit more dull down because of my lack of uh, open wheeler experience. So I should be able to stick with him. This is a very fast car in front of me. Even though it's, uh, you know, uh, 30 years apart, it's still got quite a lot of power. And some of the older cars were were or did have a lot of uh, speed anyway. They were just, uh, you know, harder to drive uh, because of no uh, aero and no uh, aids as these modern cars have. So now let's focus on trying to find a spot to, uh, to successfully pass him here. I see what I mean about keeping the the flow of it's just the flow of the car, but not but not killing all the power by coasting. So although I coast here, see I keep the power up, and and uh, it's what I call squeezing the toothpaste. So although I might coast a bit like here, I keep the revs up now and coast and power out of the corner much better than I used to. Thanks almost solely thanks to Ferrari Man 601 in teaching me how to drive these uh, much harder cars to uh, to keep on the road. So now my opportunity to pass him is either here, if I can get a good exit, or especially the next corner. In V8 supercars we have a thing called the undercut, so I'm going to try and run out wide here, he'll duck out to the outside and I'll try and undercut him here, can I? Can I get past him? Yes, 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 I've got him. I've got him now, don't muck it up. Just hold the power. If I can just hold him here, I don't know quite where he is. I didn't uh, turn crew chief on, unfortunately. So, but I've got him, have I got him? Yes, you beauty. Oh, that was fantastic. And what a brilliant new car to drive as we uh, sign out in this brilliant uh, RSS. Uh, um, uh, Formula America. So this is Michael signing out for Single Racer. I'll catch you next time as we check out the Marshall and the uh, the finished post there. See you later.